Hello and welcome to um, this morning's Bible study. Um, I haven't actually advertised this Bible study this week um, for a specific reason. <laughs> Most of you know what that reason is. Um, but um, I'm assuming that my avid followers will think, well, she's going to put one up this week anyway and then go to the website automatically and look and find that this one is actually up. Uh, the date should be Saturday the 8th of May <laughs> and um, the time should be 11 o'clock that you're actually viewing this um, a.m. UK British summer time. Um, in any event, um, this week we continue looking at chapter 18 of the book of John. Last week we covered uh, chapter 17. It was a short video because um, I tried to film on Facebook as well as YouTube Live and had all sorts of problems and um, therefore I ended up with a short 15 minute video at the end once my internet eventually kicked in, so, um, but I gave a brief summary anyway, and I shall just give you one again today. As always, let us begin with prayer. Father, thank you for allowing us this time together to come into your presence and to read your word and to learn more of you. Father, we thank you for so many things that you do for us. You've kept us this week. You've made it possible for us to gather again this week to hear your word which is so precious to us we love you and we adore you we lift you up and we exalt you we magnify and glorify and bless your holy name father it is to that end that we come to know you more to understand you more to see an example of how we should live how we should pray and so father we pray very much for your presence this morning Be with me for everything I say, let it be all of you and none of me. I ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So last time we looked at John chapter 17, and it was a prayer uh, said by our Lord Jesus Christ. In it he made several requests to God, um, and he confirmed a lot of the things that we'd already done in his mission. He also had certain objectives that was very evident um, from this prayer. Um, and my summary was that it was an, a prayer of example that we should follow and what we should be praying as Christians one for another. And it is the love of the fellowship um, that identifies us and, and distinguishes us from any other person, any other person's disciples, but distinguishes us as his disciples because we want to remain in him. We want to be connected to him, who is connected to the Father, because through him we can see, learn, and get to know our Heavenly Father, which should be our sole purpose, and to love him more, and to walk in his likeness and his image every single day of our lives. We were born as spiritual people, but with a physical body. And it is the spiritual man that needs nourishment and it's whom we shall build on as we read the word of God and we seek knowledge and wisdom from God because that is who we truly are, the spirit. And it is to be given precedence over the flesh and we are to adopt the attitude, the mindset, the work ethic, the mission, the will of God, as demonstrated through our Lord Jesus Christ. What was evident about chapter 17 was that Jesus kept repeating a specific request, and that is that he be glorified. And the reason he kept giving for this was because so people would know that he was from God. 
He was going through an immense amount of persecution from people. Therefore, it must have had a profound effect on his mental, emotional, and spiritual senses. And it's always if he needed that validation from God, that reaffirmation, that revalidation, that he is who he says he is, because only God knows. And nobody else really, really knows except God. So he keeps pleading with God to validate and to 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 carry out what he said he's going to do, the rest of it, so they can see the big picture because is at this point now where they need to believe him and he can't say anything else, anything more to them to make him believe him any more. And many of us who um, witness and speak the gospel and share it with people face this very same problem. And you'd think it's even more difficult for us who aren't Jesus, but are from him, of him, and his followers. And it is difficult. It becomes even more difficult the more we don't abide in him, which is why he keeps repeating that we need to abide and remain in him, connected to him, to make our life a lot easier when we're sharing the gospel. Because in him is the truth. You don't deviate from the truth. You can't argue with the truth. And that's going to be our stance, our evidence, our strength, our strength, our strong, our, our, our standing point, which we've got to really stand correct, and in His righteousness, not in our own. And the final thing he says in chapter 17 is that I have declared unto them by name and will declare it that the love wherein, wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So it's all about love and being connected and loyal and having fidelity and being rooted in Christ. And that is our sole purpose and aim. So let us continue this week with chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with the disciples over the brook, Sebron. There was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That they, saying, might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me. Have I lost them? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me. Shall I not drink it? And the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Anas first. For he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews, 
that it was expedient one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out. The other disciple, which was unknown unto the high priest, and spake unto her, that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked himself of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but I, if thou, why smitest thou me? Now an ass had sent him a bound into Caiaphas the high priest, a sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose here Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went out not into the judgment hall, as they should be defiled, but that they might eat Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee, Unto me, what hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I would not be delivered to the Jews. Now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king of them, a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. As I should bear witness unto the truth, every one that is of the truth beareth my voice, heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover, will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Okay. 
so Jesus is betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. And again, it's the Pharisees. That captured him. And they came with weapons to, to do this. So you can imagine what it was like at the Jesus. But Jesus knew everything that was about to happen to him. Okay, he knew, knew everything. So he asked them, Who do you seek? And um, one of the profound things is that he answers them and tells them his name, Jesus of Nazareth. And in that response, their reaction was they went backward and fell to the ground. So at his name, the mention of his name, they had, they fell out basically, or they, they, they were overwhelmed by his name. So there's a lot of power around him at this time. There's a lot of um, strength, spiritual strength around Jesus. Um, And Jesus repeats it again. Who do you seek? And they again said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I've told you that I'm me, therefore you seek me. Let these go their way. So he's saying, you found me, let my disciples go. Even to the end, as a leader, he, he didn't want people interfering with his disciples. He was prepared to take this all over on his own because he knew it was his mission. He was responsible. And in verse 9, we see again that this is a prophecy that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me have i lost none because he said that didn't he in the previous prayer in 17 which was a prophetic declaration which once it's spoken it has to come true okay and he didn't want to lose any of them so he had to protect them so he's protecting his disciples he stood for them and here we get simon peter his disciple Okay. Having a sword, he drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. So we can see that Simon Peter's quite a very bold, very quick tempered, quick to, to get angry, quick to react to a situation. You can see that that's Peter, fighting spirit, um, quick to defend, okay, on the defensive, okay. And this is Malchus, the servant who's here, he cut, he cut off. Okay. And this is Jesus' response to Peter. Pull up thy sword into thy sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I drink it? Shall I not drink it? So, so he answers this little question to Peter. God has given me this to do. It's my responsibility. Shall I not do it? It's, it's my responsibility. I've got to do it because he told me to do it. Why are you trying to hinder what's about to come? Just leave it. Okay. And they bound Jesus and took Jesus away. And first of all, they go to Annas, who is the um, father-in-law 
of Caiaphas, who's the high priest. And remember, Caiaphas was one that stated somebody should die, is going to die for the nation. And it was a sacrifice, so they won't have to die. And he knew it was going to be Jesus. Okay, so he's pointing to Jesus before he did this in a few chapters back. We read a few weeks ago. And um, we see that Simon follows Jesus. Was another disciple. And he knew the high priest, and he and they went into Jesus, with with in, with in, went into the went, went into the high into the palace where the high priest was. But Jesus stood outside. Um, sorry, Simon stood outside. Okay, so this other disciple went in, but he, he just stood outside. Then the disciple actually went outside, went to the high priest and spoke to the doorkeeper, the woman, to bring Peter in. And then she then she, she says, this damsel to Peter, are you also one of these six man's disciples? And Peter's response is, no, I'm not. And you know, it's quite puzzling, isn't it? Just a minute ago, he, he was cutting off someone's ear, Malchus's ear, to defend Jesus. Now he's denying Jesus. It's not often the case sometimes. Someone is for you when you're there and you're all set and good. But the minute you're facing trials and you're really in hot water, they back off or they get scared and... They just don't want to be on your side anymore. They're not in your corner anymore. And you don't know what to think. You think, well, why, why would somebody do that? And it's so easy for us to resent that person for doing that. Okay, it really is. It can be because that's the person that you thought was someone you could really rely on. And he let Jesus down there. Okay, at that point. And it says the servants of us of stood there and um, they made fire of coals. And there he was, he's sitting up there, Peter, and he's with them and he's warming himself to keep warm as long as your cold night. And then the high priest starts interrogating Jesus. And he interrogates Jesus. about his disciples and his doctrine. And Jesus basically says to him, look, I've spoken the truth. If I've told a lie, then you've got right to persecute me. But if I'm not told a lie, then you're not really not going to, what you're per persecuting me for. And I ain't hidden nothing. He's been up front. And he says, why ask you me? Why are you asking me? Ask the people who heard me what I said to them. Look, they know what I said. And the officer, suddenly Jesus struck him. Can you imagine this? Striking the Lord. He struck the Lord. Like he was nobody. And it says, Answerest answer thou the high priest so? Are you going to speak to him like that? And these are responses if I said something evil. Then witness that evil. 
if well if I haven't done that then why are you hear me and an ass there's a father-in-law this Caiaphas high priest sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest And again, Simon stood and warned himself. And they asked him, Aren't thou also one of his disciples? And he denied it. And he said, No. And then they said, The one that serves of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. And if you can remember, Jesus predicted this a few chapters about that Peter would actually do this. So Jesus is fully aware of everything that's going to happen. There's nothing hidden. And then they led him to Caiaphas. Okay, led Jesus to Caiaphas unto the Hall of Judgment. And it was early. And he went there so they could eat the Passover. Pilate went to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? Okay. And they said to him, if we were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto you. And Pilate says to them, Take the man and judge him according to your law. And Jesus said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. So he's predicted how he's already going to die. So this is all coming to a head now. We can see that this is this is what's about to happen. And so Pilate enters into judgment all again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus asked him, saying, Say you this thing yourself, or did others tell you this of me? Or did someone tell you? Did you say, think of this yourself, or did, or did they tell you this about me? And Pilate's answer was, I'm a Jew. Your own nation and chief priests have delivered me to you. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servant fight, and I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So Pilate says, therefore, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say I'm a king, to this end was I born. That's the, that's the reason why I was born. And for this cause came I to the world, that I should bear witness unto the, tr the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hear my voice. Pilate saith unto him, he says to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find in him no fault at all. So it's Pilate's assessment, there's nothing wrong with what Jesus said. But you have a custom that I should release to you one at the Passover. Will you therefore let 
that I release to the king of the Jews. And they cried all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Now, often in life, we have people who are living godly lives and they're following Christ they're sharing the gospel and they're faced with a situation where they want to achieve and want to do something and There comes a choice between people choosing them or choosing someone who is, say, worldly, just happy-go-lucky, not adhering to, to God, not really interested in God. And people believing in that person over somebody who is godly. And it just doesn't make any sense. And that person gets wrongly accused or wrongly treated. And sometimes in life even convicted for something they never really did or was, was innocent of and yet you have somebody who's clearly a villain clearly not for God clearly not for Christ being rewarded and this doesn't make any sense to us and you think well hang on, I've done all I can, I've prayed all I can, I've served God faithfully. What is going on? And this, this reminds me of the story of Job, you know, um, when Job did just about everything right, you know, he was living a godly life, and he couldn't understand all that he was going through. But you can see that this persecution is coming to a head. And you can see this is the final thing. It's the final thing. It's the worst situation anyone could be in. And you can see the unfairness. And this is the last straw. And most of us at this point would lose it at this point. Okay. We'd absolutely lose it at this point. Because it's quite clear to everyone that you're innocent. But yet, there's this robber that's going free and you're thinking oh my god you know what on earth is going on and at those times you could really lose your faith and question and doubt and that is your testing time. Are you going to turn back? Are you going to stay firm and believe in what you know to be the truth? And the answer should be yes. Continue. You believe you know the truth. You've gone through things. You've thoroughly investigated, you know the truth. Persist. Had Jesus not persisted and done what he did, we wouldn't have salvation. We wouldn't have that promise. Satan would not have been defeated. And it could have been easy for him to just say, I'm not doing it, I can't take any more of this. I'm giving up, but he didn't. 
And when we're faced with challenges and Jesus is reliant on us to share the gospel with others at all costs, we should take the same stance. We're going through with it. He could have given up on me and he never did. So I don't want to give up or let him down. And it's that commitment to whatever you do in life which causes glory to glorify God in you. Speak well of him all the times, even when you're going through. Believe in him. Show him you trust him. This is faith with works. Develop that unyielding, un unwavering faith, that tenacity to keep going on, irrespective of all the trials and tribulations that you're facing. Be strong in the word. Meditate on it. Search for affirmation. Pray. Father, glorify me that I may glorify you and that people will see and believe, complete my mission that you set for me, that you said I should do. And stand firm on that promise. Stand firm, reaffirm it. It's going to happen, there's no doubt about it, it's going to happen. So that concludes chapter 18 and brings us to the close of this Bible study. But before I go, I just want to say um, I hope you take on board everything I've actually discussed today and read this passage again for yourself, reread it, and think about your life and your situation. What challenges are you facing that you're thinking, I don't think I want to go on, I don't want to do it anymore, even though you know what you're proposing to do is right, it's ethical, it's, it's totally right, there's nothing wrong with it, but you just want to give up. Who or what is making you want to give up? Go forward, go forth and do it. Prove you can do it. Glorify God in you, remain in him, remain in him as he remains in you. I'd just like to say I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoy this Bible study. Please do share with your friends and your family. Goodbye.